Now, I've been keeping an eye on China over the last few days after indicators show the country's economy is struggling to kickstart itself into the powerhouse we've been previously so familiar with. Recently, we've seen pretty dismal manufacturing data and political wranglings with Japan. Well, on the line is senior analyst at Nordia Markets in Copenhagen, Amy Yuan Zhuang, and whose work focuses on China. Amy, we've seen some pretty woeful PMI data coming out of China recently. A dispute over land with Japan, not to mention a general slowdown in the country's economy. You've recently spent three weeks there. What's the general feeling like amongst the public? Well, first of all, um, the, the sentiment among the ordinary people regarding the economy is that you don't really feel recession. Um, because people are still spending money on durable goods, on travels, holidays, and uh, you know expensive weddings. So, so among the people I've been talking to, they don't really care about the economy. You know, neither domestic Chinese economy nor the global economy. The only thing people has been interested in was the the political issue, you know, the dispute with Japan and how. It fueled up uh, this nationalistic sentiment among the Chinese. Um, so, so really, uh, it was very interesting finding uh, that that um, you can't really see recession among the people. Now, we know China has been a big importer of Australian commodities and still continues to. In fact, the previously positive Australian economy, which has been boosted by trade between the two countries, has started to waver a little. What's your analysis of the relationship between these two countries and what are your thoughts in the near to midterm? Yes, of course, uh, Australia has been uh, hit by, by the slowdown in China, and especially the, the Chinese transition, growth transition towards a less you know, industrialized country and more consumption driven. Um, so it will definitely impact Australia's uh, commodity export to, to China. Um, but I don't see um, it should be impacted in a very you know, negative way because China still lacks a lot of infrastructure um, building. So, um, so, so in the near future, the commodity export to China should be held up pretty well. I mean, it, you could expect some volatility, but a general trend should be still upward going. And uh, in the future, I mean, after China has successfully transit, transited itself um, to a modern economy, when I mean, Australia could benefit from other things than only a commodity export, it could benefit from uh, immigration. It's actually one of the very popular destination for Chinese Im uh, immigration and also the Chinese tourists and also education. Many Chinese are sending their children to Australia for university education. So, so Australia definitely would benefit um, from the Chinese rules in other areas. Do you think China's economy is bottoming out? What could happen next if it continues? Actually, um, we expect, um, we believe that uh, the bottom is already seen. But the, pr the big question is when we will get out of the bottom. We, th we think that um, China will stay at the bottom for some, some months ahead. Um, because we have seen some like leading indicators such as housing market and uh, fixed asset investments have began to stabilize, um, and also the like, policies to promote them uh, is on the way. And I think that the Chinese authorities still have many, um, many options left to, to stimulate the economy in which they actually choose to use with caution. And it is good news that they don't just launch a massive uh, stimulus plan to, to stir the economy. They actually want to stick to the plan um, with you know, giving up the double-digit growth rate and then instead focus on quality of growth. We think bottom is, is already um, reached um, and we expect um, the recovery to be, to be seen in the next six months. OK, but shouldn't Beijing be saying, right, enough now, we've tried to see if the economy could pick itself up, it hasn't really been able to, so let's start thinking about another monetary stimulus package? Yes, um, I mean, um, people have speculated um, on a monetary st stimulus, on recut, on, um, on more, you know, boosting liquidity to the market. But I think the authorities are more afraid of, you know, a recut 
would um, would uh, fill up inflation were uh, were the real estate uh, bubble, the housing bubble that uh, that actually uh, the authority managed to to um, to dampen. Uh, these two issues are more important for the authorities than actually stir growth to eight percent. They can probably live with growth a little bit less than eight percent, and then they don't want to risk um, to have a high inflation. But also, you um, you seen that um, as the stimulus measures have been taken on the fiscal side, like investment plans and uh, and tax cuts and uh, and you know programs to to boost consumption. Such things uh, we will expect to see in the short term future. Okay, thank you for that, Amy, and for joining me today. That's all for now. I'll be back tomorrow with a closer look at the ECB and Bank of England rate decisions. But until then, goodbye.